I want to acknowledge the truth, which is that dopamine feels great. There are activities that we can do that will give us healthy, sustained increases in dopamine, both the peaks when they happen and to maintain or even increase our baseline levels of dopamine. So how do we do that? What are some of these activities? Well, in recent years, there's been a trend toward more people doing so-called cold exposure. In part, this was popularized by Wim Hof, the so-called Iceman, getting into cold showers, taking ice baths, exposing oneself to cold water of various kinds, can in fact increase our levels of dopamine as well as the neuromodulator neuroepinephrine. First of all, some of the safety parameters. Let's, let's establish those first. Getting into very, very cold water, you know, 30 degree Fahrenheit or even low 40 degree Fahrenheit can put somebody into a state of cold water shock. I mean, people can die doing that. So obviously you wanna approach this uh, with some caution, but for most people getting into 60 degree water or 50 degree water, or if you're acclimated and comfortable with it, uh, you know, 40 degree water or 45 degree water can have tremendously beneficial results on your neuromodulator systems, including dopamine. What temperature of water you can tolerate will depend on how cold water adapted you are and how familiar you are with the experience of getting into cold water. And when I say comfortable with, I should mention there is never a case in which getting into cold water does not evoke a release of epinephrine. So the quickening of the breath, the widening of the eyes, the the, the feeling as if you can't catch your breath and even some physical pain at the level of the skin, that happens almost every time or every time that you get into cold water, even if you're cold water adapted. What almost everybody knows and understands is that that wall, as I like to refer to it, is coming. That's always the first experience of getting into cold water. Human physiological responses to immersion into water of different temperatures. Really interesting study that was done the European Journal of Applied Physiology. They looked at people getting exposed to water that was warm, moderately cold, or very cold. It was 32 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, or 14 degrees Celsius. What they looked at were the concentrations of things like epinephrine and dopamine and so on. And what they found was really interesting. Upon getting into cold water, the changes in adrenaline and noradrenaline epinephrine and norepinephrine were immediate and fast. And these were huge increases. So that's the getting into the cold water that everybody experiences these huge increases in adrenaline. But then what was interesting is they observed that dopamine levels started to rise somewhat slowly and then continued to rise and reached levels as high as 2.5 times above baseline. That's a remarkably high increase. Remember, if we go back to our examples of chocolate, sex, a doubling above baseline, nicotine, two and a half times above baseline, cocaine. The increase in dopamine from a cold water exposure of this kind was comparable to what one sees from cocaine, except, except in this case, it wasn't a rise and crash. It was actually a sustained rise in dopamine that took a very long time, up to three hours to come back down to baseline, which is really remarkable. And I think this explains some of the positive mental and physical effects that people report subjectively after doing cold water exposure. This does appear to raise the baseline of dopamine for substantial periods of time. And most people report feeling a heightened level of calm and focus after getting out of cold water. So cold water exposure turns out to be a very potent stimulus for shifting the entire milieu, the entire environment of our brain and body 